We're here to answer your game, gaming, and game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, the best way is for questions to come through the website. That way they get tracked and I get a nice email notification. I'm still not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. Today, we've got one of the most deep questions I think we've ever been asked. Uh, Mojitaba Zeriper simply asks, why do you play board games? I, I love it. I got to say, I love it. I love this question. When I first saw this question come up, I was just like taken aback. I'm like, wow, like, like that's, it's such a simple question, but so deep, right? Like, like this is a question that applies to every other question we've ever talked about. Like, this is the, the core. Why do we do this, right? We've been talking about games and game nights for 100 episodes now. And this is the first time anyone thought to say, why? Why, why do you do this? Why, why do you care about board games? Why, why do people play the games we do? I, I think this, I, as soon as I saw this and we were like, what's going to be our topic for episode 100? I'm like, no, this is perfect. This is like the ultimate question. Forget to know us. It's episode 100. Why do we game? And honestly, just as no one's ever asked us, I wonder how many listeners have ever asked themselves this question beyond the, it's fun, you know, answer. Yeah. Oh, it's true. Like how many people actually deep dive? Like, why do they do this? Why do we play these games? Why do we take part in this hobby? Why do I want to talk to you about it? Why do I want to spread the joy? Now, going back to our, our roots, right? What we just talked about when we were doing a little recap there is we are here to answer your gaming and game night questions. And we strive to improve everyone's game night. That's what we do. So what I want to do is of course, broaden this topic. Well, yes, I want to talk about why Sean and I play board games. Why do we do it? But I also want to talk about why do people in general play board games? What are the various reasons people play games? And a brief apology to the RPG gamers out there. We're just going by the question, but there is a lot of overlap on the topic. So we're sure yeah. you'll get something out of this as well. If you just ignore the board part of our, uh, whenever we say board games. Yeah, it's, it's going to apply to most of them. I'll admit there's a few things I personally think are a little specific to role-playing. Maybe we could deep dive that topic, but you know what? We're going to stick to board games tonight. That was the question that was asked. So, all right. I, this is going to be mostly unscripted because I didn't even know how the best way to talk about this was, but what I was thinking of is, is a bunch of things. And what I'll do is I'll point out if this is something that I think people do, or if it's something that I personally believe in. All right, you may have to cut this. Just fair warning, it seems a storm has started. Oh. <laughs> and we may have to worry about power outages. Okay. Just a heads up. I'm like, is that what I think I hear? And I'm like, yes, that is what, yeah, definitely. Okay. So Good fair enough. warning, if if I do cut out. Yeah, Mo might go away. I won't. My power, my power lines are all underground. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. I, I, the stream will stay up, but without the bellhop, it's a little, uh, little dry yeah. content. So, so just fair warning. Uh, plus the, where we are, if there's loud thunder, our, it'll flicker. Like that's how great our power is here. <laughs> the, the, you know, a big boom is enough to cut it out for a couple seconds. Right. All right. So getting that heads up, that just totally confused me because I, had, <laughs> I hadn't seen anything warning anything today. And I was just like, what the hell is that sound? I don't know. Maybe the overheating mode is causing a problem. We'll air that off a bit now. <laughs> All right, so on to reasons people uh, play board games. And one of the biggest for myself is it is a way to socialize with other people. It's a, it's a way to get together with other people and do something. Uh, it gives you something to do when you're hanging out with other people. So you're not just, you know, standing around talking about the weather or the storm outside. Um, it, it's a great excuse to get together with friends. And it's something for all of you to do together. It's also a great way if you aren't a people person, because that's me. I am an introvert. I've got my wonderful little uh, office dungeon here, and it's fantastic. I don't need to talk to people. Uh, but I should talk to people. Talking to people and interacting people with is a very good thing. I'm, you know, we're not going to get into the psychology of it, but human interaction in is general. important as a, as a species in general. And so... <laughs> Uh, if you're out there playing a board game for introverts like myself or people with social anxiety, having that game to focus on 
allows you to be more comfortable socializing with other people who are playing the game with you because you can narrow down on the game if things are getting tense or, or you're you're having some anxiety issues mm -hmm. or you can sit back and you can have a great conversation with people and it's just a fantastic way to interact with people and still have a buffer as mm -hmm. well yeah one of the things that is great about board games is it gives you a similar interest right everyone who's sitting down at the table is sitting down to play the game it's it's the same reason i love gaming conventions because i have something in common with every other person i'm gonna see i'm not gonna get that going down to devonshire mall there's gonna be a bunch of people there and i'm gonna be furious that they're not wearing their mask properly whereas i go to a game convention there's gonna be a bunch of smart people that realize that plus one ac is still plus one will be wearing their masks and we also enjoy games like it's it's the one thing you're going to have a similar interest and because of that games can be a great way to meet people with similar interests whether that's just looking for more companionship or literally looking for a friend like trying to find people who have common interests to hang out with more often it's a great gateway to to making new friends meeting new people uh getting involved in larger social groups Absolutely. And you know what? There's I, I've made some great friends through gaming and actually most of my gaming friends have been made through role playing games. Uh, you know, in the in the early years, board gaming is is a little more narrow. But again, when I do get down to uh, Windsor and we sit mm -hmm. down at the at the game stores on a on a game night on a, for your birthday or just for a, a regular weekend. It's great to, you know, meet up with some of those mm -hmm. other Windsor gamers who I would probably have never interacted with otherwise. And sometimes, uh, you know, last time we were at easy mode, I ran into John, who I hadn't mm -hmm. seen in probably 20 years. So, yeah, someone else that we both knew from grade school, who is a local gamer, who is yep. really big on um, Pokemon right. is, is his big thing. But he's also really big into social deduction and party games, which is why I love to have him at my events so he can go do those somewhere <laughs> else while I go play a real game. <laughs> yep. No, I joke, obviously. They're all good games, each game for different people. Absolutely. So, so another aspect of it, which again goes with socializing, is to feel like you're part of a community. Again, this gets into psychology. This is something as a human we need. We want to belong as part of a group. And being part of, being a gamer as one on its own, by being a board gamer, you are self-identifying with a bunch of other people who self-identify as being board gamers. That alone puts you as part of a bigger worldwide community, but also locally, right? There's the local game store. There's your 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 local comic book shop that you, you play games at. There's the um, gaming cafe, or there's just the group that you get together with with your friends on the weekends and play games together. It's it's being part of something. It's being being a member, being ingrained in a community that can be very important to people. And even if you are stuck in a one horse backward town where there aren't any other gamers, the online gaming uh, world exists. Whether you're you know, playing magic through the app because you don't have anyone to play with your deck, real decks, or you're hopping onto Tabletop Simulator and playing uh, in tournaments or whatever, or over on Tabletopia, or as one of my favorites, Board Game Arena with mm -hmm. my 14 uh, constant games going on. You know, I'm playing with people from you know, Seattle and Portland and all across America on yep. Board Game Arena, and we are a community, and sometimes we reach out and chat on Twitter, but most of the time, it's just a couple of messages back, passed back and forth or no discussion at all. The game is our discussion, um, mm -hmm. and even that's a community. Uh, so whether whether you've got uh, FLGS where you can all sit down and, you know, have a, have a drink and play a game or, you know, and that means play pop it doesn't have to be an adult beverage uh, but yep. you know have a have have something to to share and uh in person or digitally especially in this mm -hmm. pandemic world uh the community is there and it is real plus there's also the digital community online pretty much any game that has any following has some type of group or forum or message board or Twitter account or whatever Facebook page where you can interact with other fans of that game. Now, most of us, I, as far as I know, most of our listeners are like us and they're polygamers and play lots of things, but there are people out there who just play Catan or just play train games or just play Warhammer or just play War Machine. And there are communities for those specific games as well, which is, another great way to interact with other people. And the other thing is games can be a way to build a community. Now, this is one I'm speaking of mainly from personal experience because 
I started off with someone who basically inherited a game collection from my father. Now, my father, unfortunately, didn't get a lot of plays with his games. Uh, being an adult now, looking back, I have to assume my dad was way more of an introvert than I thought. Despite the number of sports he played, he just never connected with a community of gamers. He had one friend that he played board games with, and he played maybe twice a year with them, and that's it. So his games just gathered dust. And I think that was the main drive from me creating what I called the Windsor Gaming Resource resource back in 2002 where i used games to build a community i went i'm going to be at a knights of columbus on saturday i'm going to bring these five games if anyone wants to play them show up and the first week we had three people the next week we had eight now the facebook group for the windsor gaming resource has 600 members so gaming can be a way to build a community if there isn't one already and also uh, be a part of a former community. Uh, I have been involved with the Windsor Gaming community from way back before Facebook existed mm. uh, in the, the PHP board days um, because I moved away from Windsor. But at the time, there were still a lot of people, Mo included, that you know I wanted to hang out with and talk about games and talk about you know what the the, the cool new nerd stuff was. Um, and I had that community already established. Mm -hmm. So even though I was building my own life and community four hours away, there was still that connection to the original community that was able to be kept in this modern age. Mm -hmm. So moving away from community for a bit and socializing, uh, another reason people play games, and this is one that I personally love about gaming is, um, I'm trying to think of that. I've got these in a weird order on my list. And I don't even know how to mention them first, but, but basically using your brain. Right. So being dedicated to lifelong learning. Now, I'm, some people do this by taking university courses or always reading novels or always reading books. For me, I like to keep my brain active by learning new games and playing new games and challenging myself to play the games I already know better. Like the, the whole mental workout of playing games. This is why I like heavy games, why I like epic games and long games. And I like, uh, perfect information abstracts it's that mental exercise the the mental gymnastics that keeps your brain fresh now we'll be we'll be clear the brain exercise isn't technically a thing you're not going to get yourself smarter like these apps keep promising on various platforms <laughs> but your brain is good at what it does so playing games keeps it uh keeps it skilled at playing games uh it's right. not going to make you better or anything else but uh there, there's other things you are doing. So if you're reading lots, you are working on vocabulary and things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, while brain training may not be a thing, there is definitely something to be said about even just the reading of rule books <laughs> yeah. as, as, a, as a way to keep, you, um, keep your brain active and, and going. See, personally, I like the, and, and there's, there's also an aspect of ego involved in this, that playing hard, difficult, heavy games makes me feel smart. It makes me feel good. It makes me like, man, I, I played Vinhos well, and I figured out that thing, and I predicted what you were going to do, and I did the thing, and it worked, and it was awesome, and I'm brilliant. Did you see what I did? Look how damn smart I am. It feels good. Absolutely. And I have to say for me, uh, especially because I'm that whole different kind of gamer, you know, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the parachute in gamer who, who drops in for a weekend, plays nine games I've never touched before and leaves again. Uh, I love the thrill of, of getting a game because it doesn't always mm -hmm. happen. Sometimes you get that, that one delivery game that doesn't make any sense. And you, you realize you know, a third of the way through that the wasteland has, uh, has walked away with your entire, uh, uh, thing and you've just messed it all up. So it's a good social experience. Uh, yep. And then other times you go, oh, wait, you know what? Pulsar, you know, that game works for me. It just mm -hmm. makes total sense. I sat down at this huge table hog and I get it and I want to do it again. Yep. Um, and and, and the, those moments uh, are so fantastic to, to be able to have. And, and the difference of them, like there's something to be said. You know, I have complained any number of times about Wasteland Delivery. Uh, mm -hmm. But I also said I want to play it again because I want to see if I can yeah. get it right. Yeah, there's definitely a, a, a reward feeling from from figuring out a game and, and playing it well and then figuring out something new for a game. So this isn't a big one for me. At least I don't think so. Like maybe deep rooted psychologically. But I, to me, this I know it is for other people. Um, there are people 
who play games just as a distraction. Like it's, it's something to do. It's a, it's a way to pass the time. It's, it's, it's better than sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> um, digging a little more deep. It can be a way to take your mind off things. Now I will agree. I do play games for this somewhat. Like if I'm stressed out and I don't want to think about the innumerable amount of crap going on in the world right now, because there is a lot of it in 2020 right now, playing a game will take my mind off that. I wouldn't call it the main reason I play games, but it's definitely an aspect that it's nice to forget about those other things for a while and just worry about how many points I'm going to get in the last round or if I'm going to be able to connect the route from Naples to New Orleans. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I there, there are certain games where I'm going to sit down, I'm going to play them because we have to review this. And if I've played it, I can talk about it in the show more freely than just sort of nodding along with, with what you have to say. Um, mm. You know, like I today we've got two reviews. I have played Jaws. I haven't played Katana, um, but I'm not always going to necessarily want to enjoy that kind of game. Uh, again, yeah. Ticket to Ride. Tra the route building games don't do it for me at all. No, no real interest in them. But I'm going to sit down, and again, I'm going to sit down with you and D and you know Sean Sean yeah. Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton, uh, yeah. or whoever, in order to have a good social experience because that's yes. why I'm there. Uh, whereas again, if, you know, sitting down to Pulsar, I'm, I'm diving in because this yeah, game rocks. I mean. So another reason people play games is also escapism. Now, again, I'm no psychologist, neither is Sean. I don't want to get into the details of this. This can be good or bad. I will just leave it at that. Some escapism in general is good, but then you don't want to go too far. Yeah. But some people do do it for that reason. And this, this is, this is a bigger thing. You know, we talked about uh, role-playing earlier. This is a huge, a huge aspect of role-playing is, is some mm. level of escapism, either intentionally or not. Um, but it is something you do need to be aware of. Uh, yeah. And not being aware of it is, is I think, where most of the problem will come from. Fair enough. So another reason some people play games, I personally don't think this is me at all. Again, unless it's something more deep-seated than I realize, is it's a way uh, to establish pecking order. It's a way to show superiority. If you are good at games, you can beat the people around you. You can show that you are better at them at at least playing this game. And this is an aspect you'll see in highly competitive people, people who only care about winning the games to prove that they're better at the game and that they can win and that they've outsmarted you or outthought you or they've they've beaten you. And we all we all probably know an alpha gamer or two who who fall into this. And again, there can be no, there there doesn't have to be anything wrong with being an alpha gamer. Correct. Um, there are a whole world of competitive sports and competitive leagues, even competitive game like gaming. Uh, Catan, you can go to tournaments for Catan, mm -hmm. and that's great. But you want to make sure that it doesn't affect the group, and that's where we go back into some of our older episodes about yeah. toxic gamers at the table and things. Yeah, we have an entire episode uh, spawned by Brian Kurtz, one of our patrons, who had his deep dive competition at the table. And I recommend listening to that for more thoughts on this. But now, not quite going to that far, one of the reasons I do enjoy playing games is that feeling of sport, that feeling of competition, that challenge. The the There, there is the, the challenge of trying to beat the other players. Now, to me, it's not a way to show them I'm better than them. That doesn't matter. And I've said it many, many times. I don't play to win, but I will always play. Sorry, I, I don't care if I win or lose, but I will always play to win. And this is, <laughs> this is one of those things where, uh, and, and this gets into the whole concept of the mind. Uh, and, you know. Yeah, if, is it a game? Is it a game? Uh, and again, because whether or not the challenge is there for you, I think is a lot of it. And, and you know, if, it, if there isn't any challenge to it, um, you know, I don't consider necessarily playing tic-tac-toe with, you know, my 10-year-old son, especially challenging. Uh, that may or may not, that, that may not really be a game anymore. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a game when I was trying to figure out how to make sure it wasn't me crushing them in three moves straight. Right. Uh, and now it's just making sure we get the cats game every time. Uh, yeah. So, you know, there's that. But then if I play my son in chess, uh, he's going to kick my butt because he likes chess. And uh, we actually just got a new uh, wizarding ch uh, chess board for his birthday. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, he needs me to sit down with him and uh, I need to struggle because I am not a good chess player yeah. uh, and he loves it. 
That's a, you might need to find some kind of digital opponent for him at that well, point. Well, that's that's the problem. Uh, we right. got him on on one of the chess trainer apps on the iPod yeah. on the iPad, and and that's how he got to be a good chess player. Mm-hmm. Uh. Oh, totally fair. But yeah, the actual the the sense of a challenge, right? And that also applies to that's that's why puzzle games are so popular right is is that challenge of solving the puzzle so that's totally removes the social aspect if you're playing it solo right so the exit games or a lot of the solo games almost every solo mode in almost every board game is honestly a puzzle like it, it, it's trying to optimize your moves to do something because you don't have the elements of other players changing things right so it's 99 percent of the time unless it's a completely random game and then it's push your luck that's that's about the only other way it goes so there's that sense of challenge then there's some people that really dig confrontation. They like to get in other people's faces. They like that us versus them, me versus the world. They enjoy um, confrontational based games where it's player versus player, whether that be a two player dueling card game like Magic or a full on war game with miniatures or any of that. Some people are in it for that confrontation, for that 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 i don't know what it is if it's the adrenaline it brings or the testosterone i don't know i'm not someone that enjoys confrontation in my games i will play games that are player versus player with confrontation but if it gets to that heated in your face i'm gonna kick your butt level i'm no longer having fun i don't enjoy that aspect of gaming yeah i'm not a pvp gamer um in any sense uh, of the word i think this this is uh, there's a lot of shared qualities and overlap with the alpha gamer uh, yeah. discussed earlier. Uh, you know these are 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 what were formerly considered jocks. Uh, the you know they 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 are there for the competition and whether or not they're you know maybe they can't they, they don't want to throw a football they want to do it on an 18xx instead um, mm-hmm. that exists for them and that's a co- totally valid way to play a game. Again though you just need to make sure that the right people are playing with the right people and yes. no one is being you know harmed or uh mm-hmm. you know physically or mentally yeah so the uh, basically the crib notes from our competition episode is if you're running that game night you put those people together you find the two people who like confrontation and you let them go at it absolutely that's pretty much it so another thing too is um geek cred matters to some people like um they they play certain games to be able to say they play those games uh it's not something I've ever quite understood, but it's definitely, it's, it's a thing that people do. Like people are like, oh, I'm an 18xx gamer. I'm, I'm a better gamer than you are. I personally think that's kind of BS. I, I think anyone who plays any games can be considered a gamer. Even if your favorite game's Candyland, I'll admit you're still a gamer. I probably show you something better you might enjoy more, but all, all the power to you. I, I don't really believe in Greek cred. I'm not going to take away your Katana card because you don't play Katana. You know, it's... Not my thing, but it is a reason people play certain specific games or Absolutely. styles of games or types yep. of games. And I think the, the whole concept of geek cred is is kind of frustrating. Uh, it gets, I, I think there's uh, a level of misogyny involved in the geek cred concept. Uh, it's yeah. why you get a lot of girl gamers being, uh, you know, treated like trash online mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of the gamer gate aspect is related to the entire the basic concept of geek cred um whereas you shouldn't have it um it should be you know yeah it's it's a game i who cares yeah <laughs> i uh, there, there's so many aspects of it too right like there's a the the i could claim i own a lot of games does that give me more geek cred right we said that just our last episode where we you're talking about game collections and curating and like i don't care if you have a thousand games or you have 10 games you're still a gamer to me yep so another one too is uh, the feeling of power. Like you, you win, you feel powerful. You're winning, especially if you got like your army building, right? Like for some reason, I think feeling powerful. I think like Warhammer 40k. I'm stomping across the battlefield. I'm kicking butt. Um, another one though that's I think even more important that is actually a um, deep seated thing in a lot of people is board games let you feel like you're in control because what you're doing in a board game is you are playing a very scripted play experience. You are confined to a very specific sandbox of you are walled in by the rules of the game. And because of that, nothing outside the box can happen, right? Like it's, this is where board games to me have an advantage over role-playing games for many gamers is the fact that you are in complete control. Everyone at the playable is playing by the same rules and every outcome that happens is expected in some way. Some may be less, uh, ex- 
the probabilities may be less that some things happen and the probabilities may be more for more, but there's only a set number of possible outcomes from that game. And that is great for people who feel they need to be in control. Absolutely. And, and there's, um, there's some, some interesting uh, aspects, uh, and I think this goes into, and, and we, we talked about in the, in the comments earlier, uh, randomness in games. Yep. And one of the reasons why gamers, uh, as a class of people, um, whether you like the term or not, tend to downvote the, the randomness in games is because it, they no longer have that control. Right. The, 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 the gamer uh, sort of framework... Uh, what people think of as those gamer people um, tend to like the control aspect. They like the ability to know that if they plan everything out perfectly, that they're going to see a benefit from that. And the randomness uh, throws that off, right? They, they can't have that concept of chess, you know, understanding mm -hmm. 47 moves ahead. Yeah, which is something we're actually going to mention in one of our reviews later, mm -hmm. which I think is going to appeal to two different types of gamers because of the randomness factor. But speaking of randomness, what that does add to games, and this is something that, that I think I have to agree with, even though it's not, I'm not someone who usually loves highly random games, but what random elements can add is that, that feeling of chance, right? That thrill. That, that the die is about to fall, and if I roll a six, I win the game, and if I roll anything else, Sean wins the game, and did I get my six, right? That that whole thrill, the, this is the, the feeling that drives games like Can't Stop or any of the push-your-luck games where you're just like, oh, do I flip one more card in Dead Man's Draw or not? And if I do, do I lose everything, right? There is definitely a thrill that can happen playing games, and you always recognize those games at a game night because they're loud. People get excited. People are, are standing up. They're leaning over the table. They're waiting for that thing to happen and see what's next. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's actually one of the things I'm really finding enjoyable about uh, Rallyman GT on uh, BGA right now is, uh, you know, the first time we played it, none of us had a clue what we were doing. The <laughs> second time uh, I had watched the, the rule, the rules, um, the rules video mm -hmm. and stomped on everybody because they hadn't, they were, they had figured wow. out some things, but not figured out everything. Uh, and I stomped ahead and then we just started our third game and, uh, between people knowing the rules and someone having a bad role, mm -hmm. the entire squad got completely benched up and it threw off everybody's game. And it's one of those things where if we were sitting around a table at the FLGS and had seen what had happened, you know, this person would have stopped been a... in the curve curve yeah. and, and, and then this next person came in and wiped out in the only other lane. Yeah. As the first that would have been an everyone, everyone would have been up, up uh, you know, yeah. up and up and going at it. And, it's, and those it's, are the great moments, right? Yeah. Like I, I, I'm calling it the thrill. I don't know what you call that, but the, those, the people play it for the experience, I guess. Yeah. So one of the reasons people play board games are for those hell yeah moments. Those, those Pit, pitch cars actually, to be example. honest. <laughs> yeah. Pitch car one, that one time when I flicked on the ramp and it literally stopped halfway up the ramp and just hung there. Like I've got a picture of that and it looks like a freeze frame of a jump, but it's not, it's my, my pog or whatever yep. my crokinole piece is sitting there. But I think that's another one that, that I didn't have in the notes here is for experiences. So people play games for experiences and that experience is going to be different depending on what game you're playing. So people are going to play something like Nyctophobia, a game that is literally designed to make you feel scared and, and creeped out because you play blind and you are playing with your fingers and people are touching you. That's going to weird out most people and really not be for other people. And it invokes an experience that you're probably not going to get another way, especially not safely. There might be other ways to have that experience, like putting your hand in the box, which Sean will never do. Actually, I'm thinking Nyctophobia is not going to be a game he's ever going to want to yeah, try. There's no box, but it's that same doesn't aspect. Doesn't really sound like uh, one yeah. of my go-tos. Yeah, that's the same aspect, right? Uh, but then there's, there's the push your luck games, right? The can't stops where, where yeah. you manage to make a, a row seven in one turn yeah. or whatever number. You make a seven in one, one just series of rolls. Or the game of 18xx where you end up bankrupting four other companies in the last turn of the game and buying them out and becoming like they're your richest you've ever riched shows how much i know about 18xx's <laughs> but i'm just trying to think of like a broad range of experiences so i think a lot of people do play games for experiences and i think one of the things i personally do is this is why i played a lot of different games is to have different experiences at the table which to me, again, is goes back to the social aspect. And this is something we hadn't mentioned again, is games create a so shared social experience, something that can be 
and often will be talked about time and again, yep. so especially those big moments, right? You are creating a shared experience with someone that's just as memorable as that great birthday party or that graduation party. It's the, do you remember the time we were playing this and happened? And that's one of the great things about uh, live plays and actual plays on Twitch is, you know, we can share, you know, you, uh, you and you guys in KTOR are playing Gloomhaven on Friday nights or were, uh, sure. <laughs> both pre pandemic. Uh, but you know, and when that's happening, there can be another community, uh, with Mujin and myself and tech mm -hmm. and whoever else is in the chat room experiencing that with you and mm -hmm. can then later on, Hey, remember that awesome when, Oh, it, it, you know, yeah. you got stuck in the doorway and ruined the entire thing. Cause nobody could move. Cause you were, you know, whatever, but yep. you know, there, there's that, there's that community that has evolved, even though there's only four people playing the game in a room, um, a bigger community has come up around that board yes. gaming. And that's and then, the sort of power that board gaming can bring. Yes. Now, this is more of a role-playing game thing, but also with campaign games like uh, Gloomhaven, you have the shared social experience with everyone else who's played that scenario. Because, Indeed, yeah. Or played that character. What you see in Gloomhaven more often, people discussing how they built their character. How'd you do it? How'd you, what'd you what do with your, your What group? was in your deck? What was in your deck, right? That yeah. That's even more common. But there's also Plane of Night is a famous one. We failed three times before finally beating it. It is now our most commented on. And if you added up all four views of those, it's probably as high as the damn FAQ. But people have commented on different ones, and it's always someone like, oh, Plane of Night, I remember that one. So Plane of Night for Gloomhaven is the Tomb of Horrors of Gloomhaven. It's it's the 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 mission that everyone's played, everyone likes to talk about. Yep. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Deanna's mentioning, you know, filling the board in Terraforming Mars uh, is one of those, yeah. oh, my God, I can't believe we actually did this moments. So... At this point, these are the ones I've got down, plus a couple extra we thought of. Do you have any others you can think of? I'm sure there are ones we've missed. No, we're going to let's head over to the lobby, and we'll see if the awesome folk gathered there have anything to add in this discussion on why they play board games, because they probably don't know why we play board games. Well, <laughs> they know now. <laughs> All right. All right. So yeah, what we want to know tonight uh, for everyone that's there now, there has been quite a bit going by and I, particularly there's a, a one from Deanna there. I would like to read off at some point. You could read off is I want to know why you play games. Every, everyone who's in the chat. Why do you play board games? Why do you play? Or if you don't play board games, play RPGs. That's fine. We'll, we'll take both. Uh, what are reasons we missed? Like, have did we catch everything? So it's so, so like uh, Pennywise mentions, you know, I used to play sports. I don't need that competitive aspect in board games. He wants Fair. to enjoy himself and have fun. Yeah, no, I get that. And that's one, like, we kind of mentioned it's for social, but I have friends. The only reason they play board games is to hang out with their friends. Yep. They are not there to play the game. Actually, that was role-playing. It wasn't board games, but they are not there to play the game. They're just there because we're all together and it's awesome and we're all hanging out and it's great. Like, that's it. That's all they care. And as a DM, I recognize that. So that player just, you know, rolls attack dice now and then. And I don't rely on anything. I'll never give them an important plot point because that's their enjoyment of the game is to hang out with everyone else. And the same is true of board games. And I know there's people at the local game store who that's it. You know, they happen to wander in. They're like, oh, you guys are playing games. I'll play games. But really, they're there just to be with people. Yep. Uh, now, as we were talking about the geek cred and, and mentioning the misogyny involved, uh, D spoke up in the chat room, and I'm just going to read off her statement. Yeah. So, okay, as a female going deep here, I think I feel like if I can kick your butt or at least play uh, or at least play intelligently competitively, I've earned my spot at the table, and certain types of folk need to shut their stupid gobs. That's yeah. part of why I like to play competitively. And anyone who has played with NG Games knows competitively maybe a little of an understatement. She just kicks all <laughs> her butts. Uh, <laughs> Well, she's not competitive. She plays competitively. Like yeah. she's not in your face about it. No, absolutely. It's not, not. confrontational. I'm I never. I'm never. I'm never gonna feel. Uh, you know, like she's lording it over anybody. Exactly. But we all know that she's probably gonna win the game, and that's a part of the fun. And that's part of the fun. It's like playing with Charles is another one where yes. the 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 fact that I beat Charles in a game is a Windsor cred thing. I mean, that's yes, that's the is. kind of interesting cred. Uh, that I find that there's our geek cred. So there's good geek cred. Yeah, I yeah. beat Charles. Yeah, I guess. I, it's I, bragging I, rights there. We didn't have that bragging rights. I think is better than the, what we called it earlier. Yeah, no, absolutely. So uh, evil John says he is the world's worst Catan player. I don't know. John might have to play on that one. I'm, I'm not a Catan <laughs> uh, player myself. So there we go. 
So, uh, so Deanna does point out she likes to kick ass. That's a reason she plays games. Yeah, she enjoys that feeling of victory of of uh, asserting her ability to play. Absolutely. Uh, Pennywise also saying, you know, he, he's a chaos player. He doesn't care about winning. He just wants to try all the strategies. And there if he go. wins, it's just a bonus. Uh, that's actually a lot of what happens uh, and why we, the group are, uh, we play with on BGA plays together. Uh, yeah. None of us could even tell you what our ELO ratings are on any of the games. Um, every once in a while, I'll accidentally forget when I forget who I'm talking to and joke with Eric about, oh, you're going to kick me out of the game because I just won Can't Stop like four times in a row. Um, and he's he care quick to remind me. He's like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. You know, none of us care if we win or lose. We're just there to play the games mm -hmm. as much as possible, basically. Uh, so people know he stops their brain from getting rusty. So again, it's it's definitely a mental yeah, yeah. mental exercise. Absolutely. Time, time. Okay, yeah, friends. Sorry, I saw some stuff. I'm trying to find it. My bad. <laughs> yeah, we've had a, we've had a very active chat tonight. So yeah, we're, so it's uh, taking we're a bit sure. to scroll back. Um, a lot of people complaining about alpha gamers and avoiding them. Again, I am not going to complain and say these people are horrible, terrible nope. people you shouldn't game with. Everyone ways of gaming are generally valid as long as they don't hurt anyone else. Now, I'm also not excusing terribly bad behavior, but get a bunch of alpha gamers and group them together if you can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like if, you, if you host game nights, there are groups that that are right for everyone. There is that type of player that is going to enjoy playing with that same type of player. Unless the person's only there to, to show off and beat everyone else, but then there's your problem player you don't want to game with. Yeah, but there's a difference between the alpha gamer and the problem player. They may yes. overlap, but they don't have to. An alpha gamer can be a perfectly fine player at your table. Yep. So then uh, Red Meeple Ryan notes, they try to be welcoming, but also play play to play and win if possible. I personally, I don't like, one of the things I do not like, and I don't know where this falls. I don't, see, I don't get it. And I think that's why I don't like it, is the people who play to sow chaos. I don't know what that is. I don't know what mental thing that is in their head. They're the, they're the people who play thieves and role-playing games to steal from the party and think that's hilarious or who show up to the game of Catan and build all around the desert and on the ones and twos. Cause ha ha ha, I'm not going to get resources. Like I don't get it. Like my brain does not work that way. So I don't know where that falls into what they're getting out of it. it annoying the other players. Like all I can think of is it's trying it's, to attention. It's, it's troll, but it's troll behavior. Uh, it's yeah. the same people who are going out into the, the chat rooms and things and, and, you know, uh, taking the opposite point just to get people riled up. Um, yeah, so, it's, it's, so it's that's... generally, it's, it's an, it's a negative, it's a negative aspect and mm -hmm. it's mostly an attention seeking, uh, behavior as far as I know it. Again, we yeah. aren't, we aren't psychologists and don't play them on TV. <laughs> yes. Again, we, uh, we, we but may not. to the best of my knowledge, it's attention getting behavior. So, so yes, like I, some people seem to play games to stir sh shite. <laughs> That's probably as bad as the other word I was uh, going to we'll, say. We'll, we'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to, to change it to, to, to stir up garbage, and, and that seems to be their thing. I don't know. I, yeah. I guess it's attention getting. So, Roger, here we go. We have someone who plays for the challenge. Yep. So we have someone in the chat room who literally plays the game for the challenge, for the, 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 the winning. Uh, also the interaction, which is great. Um, Roger had to yell that at us, so that was important. Um <laughs> In, in it for the stories you can take from them. So there you go. There's there's that experience. And it for the so Animal Leslie says they're in it for the the experience, the the stories you can take home, the the the, enjoy, the enjoyment of the game. Yeah. Um. Going back to the chaos comment, just because I was looking at something else. I play orcs, so you want to talk true chaos. They're not they're not spiky and evil, but you want to talk about chaos on the table. Try playing orcs. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Roger says, my wife and I are very competitive, but we always make up. Well, there yep. you go. So that's, that's yeah, the way Deanna it's got to be. and I are pretty good right? at that one. Yep. Uh, Evil John, social deductions games light up a different part of his brain. So that's interesting. Yep. Social deduction parts light up a, a I don't want to play this kind of part of my <laughs> brain. Uh, custom backgrounds, role play story type stuff with boring gaming is awesome, which yep. is true. Like I, I do dig, like that's why I love Shadows Over Camelot. That gets non-role players to role play. Everyone yeah. by the end of the game is like, Sir Belvedere, I will be there to help you. Like everyone gets into it, even if they never role played before. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even even with that unfortunate game we played of uh um uh yeah, we live streamed I don't know what you're thinking of. So. Uh Chinese uh, uh hells of uh 
Big Trouble in Little Big China. Big Trouble in Little China. Wow, yeah. Brain fart. Uh, you know, that's that's another great game where you can really jump in and, and play uh, play the characters. And it actually helps if you do, because the first time we played that game, we tried to play it like gamers uh, and got crushed. Yeah. <laughs> because we weren't playing like the characters, whereas that game is actually designed to play better if you are playing a little bit closer to those character types. Yeah. So Ryan's got a, a longer one here. Games have become a combined social outlet and shared structural in, structured engagement. In time, I've become an enthusiast as engaged in conversations about around hobby gaming as much as playing the game itself. So that goes into our whole community, right? Sense yep. of community. Uh, I guess that's a reason to play games is to give you something to talk about. Um, gives you gives you a conversation, something to, that, that... So here's another reason. People play board games because they, they expand beyond the table. There's more to the game than what happens right then and there. The, the the talking about it after the fact, the going online to study strategies to improve, the playing on board game arena before playing with your friends again, or doing the, I forget who it was, Gene Chu, I think, who was would purposely avoid all that so they didn't get better than their friends. All of those other aspects of gaming makes it a bigger experience than just the two hours of playing the game at the table, yeah, which I think is a good thing. There's so much more uh, around the game. Like you can go out, buy a game, sit down, play it with your family, and that's it. Uh, yep. You pack it up at the end of the night and go away. And that's actually how I got into gaming. Like, why I I feel connected to games is because, as a child, uh, my family had a stack, you know, stacks of board games from mm -hmm. the 70s that we would pull out and play. Uh, and these were all basically rolling moves for the most part. Um, you know, Monopoly levelish, or, you know, every once in a while there'd be a, a path laying game. But... You know, it was something, it was a family experience uh, and generally a good one. We didn't have the Monopoly table flip, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. Monopoly table flip family type stuff. And so that really kind of gave the, the gaming a good start in my, in my life. So I think we're probably good now. There's still some chat going on. Please continue. Feel free to continue to discuss. But at this point, I think we're good for our main topic. Well, that's it for our main topic tonight. Remember, you can find lots of gaming topics and advice like this over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on gaming advice at the top of the page. <laughs>